Greetings to you all. My name is Larry Pearson. I'm the Vice President of Marketing at Impetus Technologies, and I'm pleased to be your host and MC for today's uh, session on the topic of transforming real-time customer 360 with Apache Spark. Uh, let me start with a, a brief introduction of our speakers who will be taking us through a deep dive into this, uh, this important uh, and exciting and popular topic on real-time customer 360 and how Apache Spark coupled with Stream Analytics can, uh, can help you to achieve that, that objective. Uh, with us today, uh, I'm pleased to introduce uh, first Anand Venugopal. Anand is uh, head of product strategy for the Impetus product, Stream Analytics. Stream Analytics is an enterprise-grade streaming analytics platform built on open source and developed uh, as a way to, uh, in today's context, uh, with regard to the whole host of, of functions and use cases pertaining to Customer 360, our, our topic for today. Uh, Anand has 20 years of software innovation and business development experience. Some of you uh, are probably familiar with him. He's been a, co a popular conference speaker on the topics of real-time analytics and streaming data processing. Also with Anand today is Sonam Sharma, a solution architect uh, for Stream Analytics. She has seven years of uh, rich big data experience with particular experience expertise now in implementing solutions built on Apache Spark and Storm and a variety of uh, industries like telecommunications, uh, retail, uh, call centers, and others. Uh, our agenda for today uh, looks like this. We will spend some time up front just baselining why and what uh, of the, in the whole creating the whole context for the discussion on real-time uh, customer 360, and that will be as, a, as an intro into the deep dive where we'll cover the challenges of some of the traditional approaches and architectures and then uh, show a, an, Apa an Apache Spark-based architecture uh, for implementing uh, that same a set of real-time customer 360 functions. It's actually we will then demo a actual uh, customer 360 uh, uh, application that was developed uh, using the Stream Analytics platform, and uh, of course at the end, then we'll summarize, wrap up, and uh, answer your questions. So during the uh, during the session, you'll see in the chat window of your screen the ability to enter those questions. It's always a, an important and lively part of any of our webinars and would encourage you to be sure to do that. We always answer all of the questions. If we don't have time to do that live, we will do that in a follow-up uh, uh, via email. Uh, before we start our, our webinar, we'd like to uh, take a poll. We'll leave that poll open for fully 15 minutes and give you the opportunity to uh, interact with that, at which time we'll, we'll pause our presentation and share the results, uh, the results of that poll with you. It should be appearing on your screen right now. What are the challenges with, with, that you face with the current approach for Customer 360? And you're able to choose all that apply. Uh, fragmented or siloed systems is one that we've maybe all faced. I remember earlier this year when, as a Marriott Rewards member, I decided to add a, a premium level a, a Marriott credit card uh, to my profile. As soon as I responded uh, and converted that uh, offer, they immediately threw me over to a Citibank uh, credit application form where I had to re-enter my name, my address, other pertinent uh, contact information, which Marriott had, and in addition, my Marriott Rewards number, none of which was persisted over from the Marriott system, a great example of fragmented systems. Uh, and, and frankly, um, as a rewards member, that was not, and I think we'd all agree that the Marriott Rewards program is one of the premier loyalty programs uh, on the planet today, very, very popular, and yet that uh, did not end up being a great user experience uh, for me at that point. Interestingly enough, this was on my mind because just this morning I got an email from Marriott repeating the same offer, which I converted on, you know, many months ago. So just one uh, a live example, some of the other limitations and challenges we face is the lack of real-time processing, 
minimal application of some of the advanced analytics around that are available to us today in the form of machine learning, uh, difficulty to scale for big data or the la or lack of talent in developing uh, systems like that. So as I say, that will stay open for the next 15 minutes and we'll look forward to sharing the results of that poll with you. And at this point in time, let me introduce Anand Venu Gopal to take us uh, uh, through our webinar. Thank you so much, Larry, and thanks for that little story. I think it sets us up really well for the topic of real-time customer 360. Um, and thanks for the introduction as well. So before we proceed with the topic itself, I just wanted to have the audience understand a little bit about who we are at, at Impetus. Our mission here at Impetus is to create powerful and intelligent enterprises, and, and naturally understanding your customers very deeply and in a holistic manner is, is part of being an intelligent enterprise. And that's why you know we're doing this and enabling that solution. Uh, for those of you who who may not uh, really know us very well, actually, we're proud to say that many of North America's respected and well-known brands trust us as their strategic detail and analytics partner. As you can see, the little logo symbols down there. There's major airlines, the major credit card companies, healthcare, telecom, wireless banks. We're working with multiple verticals, and the, the interesting thing about this topic is that it is actually applicable to all consumers serving businesses. And we offer products, including this platform called Stream Analytics that you will see a little bit of today. We offer services and solutions, and ultimately, we're very, very focused on your business success. Uh, we are headquartered in beautiful Los Gatos, California, uh, our headquarters, uh, and that beautiful little lake is right five minutes walk from our office where I'm sitting right now. We also have offices in India, about 1,800 employees total across across locations, and we were founded in 1996, con continuously profitable and, and growing organization, and we have other interesting offerings that, that, you, will, that you can find more about at, in our website. We have a nice migration uh, platform and, and, a, and the tooling for quickly moving your workloads from uh, from ETL jobs on your traditional data systems to the big data. We have our sister company, um, Kaiwa's Insights, that is an amazing breakthrough BI on Hadoop platform. There's a plenty of offerings there from Impetus besides our services and data science offering as well. So with that, I will end the little commercial about Impetus and then move on to the topic. Um, first of all, like we, as part of transforming something, you have to be present to what your current view of anything is, right? So what comes to your mind when you think about Customer 360? Typically, when, when we talk to IT people or when we wear our IT hat, you might say, well, it's all about multi-source data ingestion at scale, bringing data together, blending it, enriching it, deduplicating records, establishing unique identity, et cetera, right? Um, if you're on the business side, you may say, well, it's all about really computing lifetime value for customer or average, increasing your average revenue per user and assessing their propensity to buy something and finally, you know, net promoter score. So these constructs are all enterprise constructs from, from our side looking out to consumers and monetizing, et cetera, right? It's not really the human view, though. The human view is about you and me. It's about what we care about. And it's about our priorities. It's our, you know, when, when you get in touch with a human being, it's about their hopes and dreams and their commitments, their past, present, future. And at the moment in the transaction that we are dealing with, it's about what we're trying to do. That personalization is simply not there today in today's systems, and we have all gotten used to, though, that that level of personalization is actually coming to us in, in other systems, in other, in, other, in other companies, like we deal with Google and Amazon and Facebook. They're, they're increasingly personalizing it. And of, it, it is obviously important also to limit that to a comfortable level where we limit, we, we limit that information that we, are, that we are sharing. But we wish very often that the enterprise uses the information that we provide, all the information that we provide, and deliver us that kind of personalized service. 
And when that kind of personalized service is not available or not delivered to us, and we have to repeat ourselves 10 times to customer service agents or obvious misses are made by these enterprises, we tend to remember those experiences and leave. Research shows that 25% of customers will defect after just one bad experience. Um, so the other aspect that is coming up in customer experience related studies is that individual touch points may be fine, but even there is, if there is suboptimality in those touch points, the end-to-end -end experience of our journey through working with a particular customer or a particular enterprise, let's say a bank or a telecom company or insurance, whatever it may be, we tend to, we tend to remember the, the entire experience. And in this case, what we're showing is 90% into 85% into 85%, et cetera, is, is 60%. So you're left with a very, very suboptimal experience uh, sentiment at the end of it, even though the touch points were reasonably okay. So the systems in the back end have to be really, really optimized to ensure the complete success of the customer from including all of those experiences, right? Now you can begin to think what that might look like and what that might be, but that's that's the kind of thing that we that we need as uh, as a solution for this. So, what is real time customer 360 then? Um, it is all about deeply understanding the current state of your customer at the moment of your current interaction, together with the context of the entire past. I, I'll go one more step and say, hey, why hasn't it happened so far, right? There have been attempts at Customer 360 for a long time, for decades probably now. The entire data warehousing transformation was designed to do something like this. But the data warehousing transformation resulted in an architecture uh, that was good, that served everybody for a while. You know, it's all about uh, large-scale databases and transaction systems feeding ETL engines that, Night do nightly jobs and load up the enterprise data warehouse, and then data marts and and reporting engines and BI tools are consuming all of that and then doing some processing work. Right? It was obviously supposed to do this whole integration work, but we find that there are a lot of different you know challenges here. So before we give our take on the challenges, we'd love to hear uh, what happened on your side and what what did you respond with as your challenges. Uh, go ahead, Larry. Okay, we should have the poll results uh, tabulated here momentarily, and now you see them. What are the challenges with today's system? 68% uh, uh, like me and my experience there as a Marriott Rewards loyalty member. 68% <laughs> said that fragmented and siloed systems was uh, it, and in the very close second, 62% no real-time processing. You see the others, minimal application of machine learning, inability to scale for big data, lack of talent, also being important. You see that lack of talent there, 41%, a shortage of in this context that we're talking today, possibly a shortage of, of Apache Spark talent, if not functional talent on what it takes to define and, and implement from a business analyst point of view, customer 360. But these are uh, maybe no surprise uh, to us, certainly fragmented systems is is what I would also list as the first in real-time processing uh, being second, and both of those can be addressed with some of what we're talking about today. Anand, back over to you. Fantastic. Well, it is so aligned with what we are communicating today as well. So what we came up with as a um, the list of challenges and limitations, just, just, just working with customers like you and large enterprises is exactly this, where we said, look, fragmented systems, no true single unified view is, is one of the biggest issues. And that, that, of course, is because of both political and technical issues. And even when they come together, the, there's batch workloads, no real-time processing. So you saw the largest percentage of responses was actually to those two top bullets. And we put those two top bullets right there up front as well. And we're happy to say 
we're we're actually going to propose a solution or a solution template that that addresses a lot of this, including talent uh, and and application of machine learning, et cetera. So scalability of the systems to process all that data is is minimal. Unstructured data is still remains uh, elusive in its access, in its integration, in in you know tools to understand it and integrate it with the rest of the structured data. And um, with with the talent and and how uh, difficult it is to work with some of these new technologies, including open source. I mean, we we all love open source, but uh, you know the talent and the ability to work with it, integrate it, and make it production ready and at enterprise scale is a challenge. Let's begin to look at the core of today's topic and what might a real time customer 360 solution look like, right? If if you want to overcome all of those limitations, then what should the new system be? Well, first of all, right, it provides a solid, always on, unified view of the past, present, and the future with regard to customers and consumers, right? And and present, we mean all the way up to this moment. The guy picks up the phone and calls you, calls the contact center, the contact center receives the call. What did the guy do just before the call? Maybe even... What is he doing on the website as he's talking to you? You know, that is present all the way up to the moment. Bringing that kind of a view, including the entire history, and in an always-on system where naturally you're going beyond data integration, and this is information integration, is interpretation of all the data and making sense of it and delivering it to the point of customer interaction, right? And naturally, all of that is possible only with this, where there's a predictive, prescriptive modeling. Actually, predictive, prescriptive modeling goes beyond data and information integration. It's about, it's about telling that agent what to say or what to offer. I think that, to a large extent, in many cases, is there, but it doesn't take into account all the signals that the customer is giving us. And accurate, trustworthy data that's been, that's been uh, collected, cl cleansed, for accuracy and you know um, deduplicated, you know all the ambiguities resolved. That's important. And finally, it provides to all applications a recent, comprehensive, relevant, and and view unified view that's sensitive to privacy concerns included. Right? We would say these are the elements of a real-time customer 360 solution, and we would look, we should be looking at what kind of technology framework would would enable that. So we're proposing, or we're saying, in a, in a simplistic way, there's not rocket science, there's multiple ways to do this, but in a, in a simplistic way, there's a lot of big data architecture slides that you might get to see in different presentations that you might have in your own, in your own, in your own uh, environment. We all know that it always starts from the left to the right. You, you have consolidation of all the data sources first. You're, you're getting it into a landing and ingestion system, and, and the, all of the white areas that are not gray are from the regular traditional architecture, including the enterprise data store or data lake, which is a possibly a Hadoop-based system, or you're possibly in the middle of a moving to a cloud, cloud and, and having a hybrid solution between on-prem and cloud. But all of that is the core infrastructure, the landing and ingestion, the wrangling, data preparation, analytics, machine learning, enterprise data store. So we're assuming that the gray portion, let me talk to the gray portions now, right? So the customer 360 data processing engine which is a unified real-time and batch processing orchestration layer, is able to talk to all of these and is able to constantly deliver that vertical block on the right side called the real-time unified view, which is refreshed on an ongoing basis. And finally, the enterprise applications, the BI business analysts are able to receive and query and talk to that unified view, which also, by the way, is enriched by the Customer 360 predictive analytics, right? So when we say, look, ongoingly, you got to say when Joe Smith sends a signal of some kind, he's, he's uh, clicking on the website, he's you know going to certain pages on the website that indicate that he's intending to leave, as he's doing that, right after that session, the predictive analytics engine comes up and says, "Whoa, he clicked on a few on a few pages that we know are historically indicative of churn." So bump up bump up his 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 uh, churn potential score. Right there, he might not even be calling anybody, but he's doing this. So 
the system is actively computing and interpreting his, his actions, of course, based on historical data, based on accurate machine learning, based on all of the signals. And any time they're forward, all applications in the enterprise that look up this person's record then has access to what he just did and the fact that we, the company, are interpreting that this person is likely to leave or he's dissatisfied or he's likely to buy this, whatever that, that, that predictive analytics might be. So the combination of the real-time and batch processing workflows that funnel the, way, the data through, create a unified view, and have predictive analytics is what we call the, the real-time customer 360 architecture. And we'll be talking a lot more to this towards the, the later part of the webinar and thankfully showing you some of this as well. So over to my competent, enthusiastic partner, Sonam Sharma, who's actually working with me closely uh, in working with many large enterprises like you and implementing some of this. Over to Sonam. Thank you, Avi. So as a part of the demo, we'll be looking at scenarios wherein Customer 360 solution is not present and in the later part of the demo, we'll look at an actual real use case that we, use, that we implemented using Stream Analytics and Apache Spark as the underlying engine. Now, let me take you to, to a scenario wherein with the launch of new iPhone, everyone is pretty excited to upgrade their existing iPhone to the latest one. There's one, one of the customers, they go to their vendor website scroll through all the options, does all the research of which iPhone he wants to buy, which model, what color, what is the payment plan he wants to buy. He does all that research, finally comes out to the checkout window. When he clicks on checkout, the, it prompts the customer that his order has failed and he needs to contact the customer care support. Now once he has gone through all the options, he's done all of his research, but disappointed with, his, with the services he faced on the website, he calls the contact center. He goes through all the IVR options, talks to the agent, who, uh, who again asks him to reiterate his story. He explains how he went to the website, scrolled through all the options, but the order didn't go through. And then he redirects and transfers that call to one of his supervisors, who again asks him the same story, takes all the information from him, takes all the details of the experience he's had with the order, and puts him on hold. Adding to the frustration of the customer, the customer just decides not to kept on hold and just hangs up. Now the customer is deciding to go in person to the store. I'll take a pause here and imagine the scenario of the agent who's sitting at the store who has no clue about how many channels the customer has been hopping to, how frustrated and annoyed that customer is who's just walking in to the store to tell how bad the services the company is having. And the agent has no clue at all about those channels. Now, if the Customer 360 solution has been implemented, what if the agent just puts in the customer ID, clicks on the search button, and is able to view all the recent activities that the customer has done. So looking at this omni-channel view, he can see that the customer tried to buy an iPhone, went through all the options he want to buy for, but the order failed for some reason. He then called up the customer care contact center. He was connected to one of the agents, and then he was hopped to and transferred to multiple agents as a result of which he just hung up while he was put in on hold. Now, if I want to look at the call flow, I'll click on this, and you'll see this whole call flow details wherein the customer had called up the call center, went through all these IVR details, talked and connected to one of the agents, and then he was transferred to another agent. So all of that call stitching of multiple interactions that the customer has had is the agent able to view on the view on on the portal itself now looking at all of these options instead of having the customer to retrace his story the agent can proactively greet the customer with an apology and tell him that 
I understand that you were, able, you were trying to buy an iPhone. You did all your research, you called up the customer care center, but they were not able to help you. Let me process that order for you. And in addition to that, he'll be also able to recommend the promotional offers he has. So I'll, I'll provide you a 10% discount on your total order purchase. Now imagine this scenario wherein the customer, instead of being extremely frustrated, just walks in to tell that I'm no, no more continuing with your services. Instead of that, you have a delightful customer with a very positive feedback. Now moving on to looking at how actually we built that customer 360 solution using the purchase spark and stream analytics. So as Anand had mentioned before, on the left-hand side, if you'll see, all the data channels are there. There are multiple channels with structured and unstructured information coming in from websites, from IVR call logs, social media information, and so on. In order to serve a customer 360 solution, you have to have an omni-channel view, which can provide you better recommendations for the customers, such as next, what's the next best offer, what the customer should be offered. It, provides, it should provide you a seamless communication landscape for the customer, which will ultimately reduce the customer churn. Now Spark provides you all the Spark APIs for doing all the event time processing, doing enrichment with your current data, doing real time and batch implementations for your application. And on top of that, you can also do machine learning. Now I'll take a detour and tell you something about Spark APIs that we have. There are various types of Spark APIs that we have right now. You have various data ingestion APIs, which allow you to ingest data from multiple file systems, databases, streaming sources such as Kafka, RabbitMQ, JMS, et cetera. You have data quality, data enrichment, filtering, data cleansing APIs that are available here, wherein you can do apply time-based filtering. You can apply aggregations over sliding in a fixed window. You can apply enrichment with data at rest. With the latest version of Spark, you also, it also supports multiple stream joins. So you can also do that. You can apply SQL joins and do some analytics after you've done all the pre-processing. Now, knowing all that extensive Spark API, you can opt for one of these parts. Either you can take a longer path, wherein you are hand coding all of these functionalities, hand coding everything that is required to build your business application, fitting all that functionality together, and I'm sure that will stretch over months. Or else, you can use Stream Analytics, which sits on top of Apache Spark, enables you to rapidly build your Spark application because it has all of these functionalities that Spark provides as pre-built, pre-coded operators. So you have all these real-time real -time streaming and batch applications with data preparation, machine learning, applying real-time alerts and actions. All of that is present in Stream Analytics as predefined operators. So you can drag and drop all of these and stitch the functionality together, reducing your implementation time to weeks from months. If I talk about core real-time customer 360 logic, it involves data ingestion from multiple, multiple channels with structured and unstructured data information coming in. It involves data quality, deduplication, and aggregating the whole information coming in from all the channels for every customer. In order to create that smart, unified, omni-channel view, wherein the agent can when the customer is not driving the whole communication landscape and doing all the touch points in each and every channel, the agent is the person who drives all the communication, provides the seamless landscape for the customer. And he is aware of all the channels and the information and the activity that the user has done. So Stream Analytics, we'll next look up at how Stream Analytics is enabling the real-time enterprise and providing you all these functionalities listed down here as the core concept of Customer 360. What you see here is the Stream Analytics web user interface. This all these styles that you see here are the Spark streaming and bad jobs that we had created. 
we'll start by looking at how you can create and implement any complex business use case in stream analytics. So this is one of the pieces of the customer 360 data pipeline that we had implemented for processing the website information, the click stream data that's coming in. Stream analytics provides your canvas here. And on the right hand side, there's a set of operators on the palette that are available for the user to drag and drop and stitch the functionality together. So there's absolutely no amount of coding that's required. There are, we'll start off by looking at the building blocks for any data pipeline in stream analytics. So, so the first category is channels, which basically are the data sources of your data pipeline. In this case, we're using this click stream as a data channel. There are other sources that are available, like Kafka, JDBC, RabbitMQ, S3, et cetera. The next category is processors, which are the transformations and logical operations that you want to apply on your input data stream. So we have used filter operator and functions operator, which are allowing me to implement multiple nested logical expressions on my input data stream and also do enrichment and apply data quality rules on that. Once we have done that, the third category is analytics, which allows me to use the data machine learning algorithms as pre-built operators, which I can drag and drop here on the canvas and create this whole functionality. Once you've done that, the last step would be you would want to persist your data to one of the data things so you can use these operators and drag and drop here on the canvas. If you look at this application, we are collecting that web stream information. After we have done all the filtering and enrichment, we are joining that to the customer history. So we are pulling all the customer relationship information that we have and we are joining it to the current stream and aggregating that whole information for the customer. Here on the inspect window, Stream Analytics provides you the feature for looking at the output and tracking all the schema changes as and when you're developing your and designing your application. So for every operator, if I click on this inspect icon, I get the output of the logic that I've implemented in the operator itself. Once you have all these customer aggregated information correlated over all the channels, you can apply various decision tree recommendation engines or you can apply various different algorithms developed in Python, Scala, or using the notebooks feature that Stream Analytics has, and use that for providing better recommendations and sending alerts in real time. So this is how easy it is to use the drag and drop feature of Stream Analytics and create any complex business use case that you have. Now it's just not about develop, rapidly developing your business application, it's also about monitoring those applications, submitting them at Spark cluster. So all of these styles are Spark jobs. In order to submit these jobs at the Spark cluster, you need to cl click on the Start button. Once you do that, it takes all of your Data360 logic and publishes it and pushes it at the Spark cluster. For all the active jobs that you have running in your cluster, you can click on this button and go to the view summary tab, which enables you to monitor all your Spark jobs in terms of how many batches are processing, how many input rate is your pipeline getting. And you can do all the optimizations and Spark parameter tuning using this user interface. With the latest version of Spark, we also have the feature for notebooks. So if you want to use Python or Scala kernel notebook, and you want to do all of your data exploration and data modeling, you can use this notebooks feature. With this, I'll hand over the presentation to AV. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Sonam. <clears throat> I'm hoping the audience is now beginning to connect the dots to the whole Customer 360 business solution and the technology stack, which is Apache Spark driven and a big data integration, uh, real time and batch analytics driving all of this, right? So we really uh, are, are enthusiastic and passionate about this. And as you can see, you know, it's, it's all about bringing data in the customer 360 core logic here is, is about ingestion, is about ensuring that the data quality and integration is taking place. And the key aspect of Customer 360 is the deduplication and establishing a unique ID in very many cases that itself needs machine learning application. 
um, you know, to if there is an L Pearson versus a Larry P versus um, Larry Pearson, and if there are different customer databases in the company, which always there is, how do you how do you uniquely identify that all of these is one individual versus maybe in some cases they are two different individuals, right? There's some intelligence that we need to establish there before making conclusions and saying, well, you know, all of these different things are the same guy. So before the smart unified view, that deduplication and unique ID is essential, and then you create the smart unified view. And why we say not just unified view, it's smart, because you're enriching it with the predictive analytics. And with that enrichment, then it is ready to be consumed by all of these applications. And ultimately, the objective is really to deliver a great, great customer experience in all, every possible way. So has this tool, product, platform actually been used by any other organization, right? Um, answer is yes. We are actually working with uh, many large organizations um, in with stream analytics and then enabling them with this kind of a solution. And I'm going to talk to you about one large cable TV and wireless um, and tele overall telecom operator that we work with, that we, we have worked with, we worked with multiple of them. So in this case, it, it was about ingesting set-top box data. It was about ingesting the, the contact center data. It's about ingesting the maintenance tickets um, and finding out more about. There are two, three different use cases there. So the 360-degree view of customers for micro segmentation and targeting was done. Marketing wanted to see how people are engaging with their content and their network in real time. And uh, the contact center was getting a lot of calls about um, sla broken slash uh, defective set-top boxes, and that was driving a lot of call in inbound calls. So they wanted to be predictive about that and see if, if in any inbound call is, is, um, is a frustrated customer. So we actually created a frustration score on 1 to 10 using various signals such for including the set-top box ID itself and whether the maintenance tickets have been open, et cetera. So correlating multiple streams of information and give, giving that predictive view um, was all part of, again, creating those models and running those models in stream analytics in addition to the data integration itself. So we were able to deliver multiple screens, multiple very vibrant uh, views for this customer, including managing their agents uh, and the contact center agents and chats that, that the customer was uh, that customer reps were uh, the, con the contact center team itself, right? Which which impacts the customer experience. So the agent monitoring, we got omni-channel view of multiple channels, uh, depending on the demographic segment, and that again was was real time, continuously updated. Uh, we we used um, you know Kafka, Hadoop, we used Elasticsearch, uh, and and we delivered all of this with with the web-based interface, which was. Um, you know, and on a, either both a pull and a push basis, it updated in real time. So uh, this was this was in fact what caught their attention and how dramatically fast this got accomplished in about 12 to 13 weeks. And we that's how we we uh, we won that customer engagement and then continuously on ongoingly enhanced it as well. So this is an example of a, a large telecom operator. We're working with multiple large banks that are precisely doing very much similar things. Um, aggregating different customer touch points and bringing the entire journey and experience view to it. So this system is actually in production in, in multiple large enterprises. And um, I want to get a sense of also from, from your side, uh, before, we, before we recap this webinar and, and uh, look, look at everything that we said, uh, over to Larry for like a, an exit poll. Yeah, this is the interactive portion of our webinar. We give you two opportunities to interact with us. One is a second poll. So there's there's uh, an opportunity here to uh, express that you would like to engage with our experts that will contact you, talk about some of our experiences. We have a formal assessment capability. Uh, or no, you wouldn't like to do that, or you'd like more information. And if you would uh, use that to interact uh, interact with us, uh, that would be terrific. This is also the time when we would ask you to use your feedback portion of your console, your WebEx console, to provide us with your questions. And we will shortly go to a Q&A portion when we will be able to address those questions. So 
Uh, hopefully those questions are coming in and would encourage you to do that at this time. It's always one of the highlights of each webinar uh, that we do. Anand, if you want to Thank summarize you. any more of what we've covered here today, uh, that would be that would be terrific. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, you know, I think most importantly, what is the impact of a customer 360 solution, right? If this kind of a solution is implemented, you can do it not multiple ways. Um, and but the point is, if it is implemented, what is the impact, right? I think the most important part is the human view, as opposed to the enterprise view, gets really, really, really uh, contributed to. You and me, different different people, we're interacting with all of these large enterprises. Our general satisfaction level, our productivity level goes up. When, when enterprises implement these kind of solutions which are intelligent, empathetic, and really bringing a human view to a human touch to, to enterprises. Uh, both empathy and intelligence combined is, is delivered. And what does that do to revenues, profitability, marketing? Obviously, it, it does wonders. We are able to bring customer data together, unify customer profiles from different data sources, Marketing campaigns can be way more effective and precise. The general overall journey of customer experience is, is enriched. Customer care is, is going to be smart, reactive, and proactive, as in you know, quick reaction plus being proactive, right? Um, we, we are going to get calls or alerts before we ever realize that there's a problem, and, and people will most, you know, 95% of the time just tell us that there's an issue and we're working on it rather than we finding out suffering as a result, and then making calls. So customer profitability in general enhances and retention, of course, uh, goes up. So we're literally upping the bar in, in enterprise um, performance and our quality of life by, by implementing such a solution. And at, at an at a overall takeaway level, we're saying bringing human empathy and depth to the complete customer experience would be a transformative for, for consumers and business. And always on predictive real-time customer 360 solutions, truly a critical success factor given that, that you know, the Googles and Amazons and Facebooks of the world are leading the way on that whole aspect. The traditional enterprises which are challenged in their competitive landscape and in, in retaining customers, et cetera, need to do this to, to be competitive and, and uh, have that respect and loyalty by, from your consumers. And what is needed to make that happen is a scalable machine learning enabled stack that is needed for a unified, predictive, and prescriptive view of the customer. Finally, Apache Spark is a great technology framework distributed computing platform that has wide adoption nearly almost like getting to between the 90 and 100% level. Whether it's on-prem or on the cloud, doesn't matter, but using, using, using Spark and the distributed computing power of Spark with, a, with an elegant product and tooling on top of that with stream analytics as we have demonstrated today, um, bring forth that capability required to build and deploy customer 360 in real time. So with, with that, with that concluding um, you know, pitch or uh, recap, what I want to do is take your questions and uh, answer them as far as, as far as we can. So feel free to put in your questions and uh, we'd love to answer them. Excellent, Anand. There have been a number of uh, great questions that have already, have already come in. The first one has to do uh, what uh, I will refer to as the, uh, the architecture that we're using. It says, first of all, what is the processing engine that we're using? Is it Apache Spark or some other in-memory database? Yeah, it is Apache Spark. I mean, I think we, we spoke a lot about it. Uh, Apache Spark is one of the processing engines that, that, uh, that we use. And uh, it is coupled with in-memory caching mechanisms like potentially Couchbase or Ignite or Redis, et cetera. But our, our usual architecture pattern is Spark that has obviously both real-time and batch processing capability. Uh, in our platform, of course, we have Storm, we got Flink, we got TensorFlow as well. So that's the beauty of this platform that has multiple, um, multiple engines. And so that will be the processing engine. Okay, great. Thank you. For online users, how is the data stored? And they make reference here to HBase or other uh, databases that may be used. 
Yeah, I mean, the, there's there's obviously uh, different different data stores that that you can use. Um, HBase is a candidate. Cassandra is a candidate. You know, Couchbase is a candidate. There's a number of NoSQL databases. The beauty of Spark is that you got connectors to any one of them. We don't impose any architectural um, impositions such as choice of data store. NoSQL in general with, with, uh, with quick read write access would be a great candidate. And we've also been served very well with, uh, you know, Elasticsearch and Solar as our indexing stores. So depending on your environment, our uh, our philosophy is not to impose any choice of a particular product other than Spark itself, which is a processing engine. All the surrounding components are flexible, and there are probably three or four different choices for each of these uh, each of these components. Can it be integrated with third-party scheduler? Yes, absolutely. So we um, we have we have ready-made integration with Uzi. We we could integrate with Airflow. We could integrate with third-party scheduler uh, to to schedule your batch jobs. And of course, real time is always on. So does the click view just output 10 or 50 records for all for all records? Because in a window there could be 20,000 records. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we that's just a sample. What we just showed you. Um, in our tool, you could you could have the whole point is to see a set of sample records. So as you're building your logic, you're able to see real data coming through. And when you build uh, build your logic on stream analytics, you're able to see exactly what is happening at every stage in your logic development. So and that you know you, it's not really about um, what you're seeing there is a sample set of records. Sonam, is that uh, is that accurate? Do you want to step in there? Yep. So uh, the records that we saw at the inspect window is uh, just for the design time. So it just takes a sample of records and runs it. You can uh, configure those records also and view it on the inspect window. Yeah. Right. So uh, there's a question about do you have monitoring for spot streaming jobs, and if so, what kind of monitoring information is provided? Um, we we touched monitoring briefly. Sonam actually showed that in in the in the demonstration. We do we monitor the the records, how fast they're being processed, the average processing time uh, of of, of uh, the micro batches, um, and of course, if the if the job stops, we will send you all kinds of alerts. So that that is again is also there. Uh, so there's there's a variety of monitoring with connecting to alerts. So you can set alerts on different conditions. Uh, if uh, if you want to get alerted, even you know on a slowdown of your pipeline or a complete shutdown of your pipeline for sure. Um, so how does this application handle back pressure? Uh, for example, I get events from Kafka, and for some reason, this, is a, this you know Spark is unable to process the records within window time, and the Spark window queues will increase. How does the application handle it? We we do handle back pressure. Um, yep. So uh, all the applications and data pipelines that you're creating on Stream Analytics, they get submitted as a Spark job. So your application is basically the Spark job that you have created. For handling back pressure, we provide all the Spark tuning parameters on the UI itself. So you can you can tune your Spark memory, executor memory, and driver memory. In addition to that, if there, as Anam had mentioned before, if there's some back pressure and your records are not getting processed, you get all those real time alerts also and notifications that you, there's a threshold that you have defined in the Spark uh, and the input rate has gone down from that rate, so you get all kinds of alerts also. Great, thank you, Sonam. Um, few more questions here before we, uh, before we hang up. We do have a few more minutes, so, um, can you show the integration, or can you see show the integration point for Spark? Do you have to use Scala to integrate to Spark? So the way this works is the the web interface that you show that we saw here in this in this demo is actually running off of a web server. Stream Analytics is a web-based application that sits on Apache Tomcat, and that web server application is sitting on an edge node that needs to be talking to the Spark master. And once you do your pipeline development, debugging, iteration, and all of that, and you say submit, we would we would um, submit it to the Spark Master, either directly or through uh, Libby, 
And uh, that's how that's how we would do that. And that that's the touch point with Spark. From a programming point of view, you can do Java, Scala, Python, and we in fact have notebook integration as well, Jupyter notebook integration as well embedded. So you can use all of these mechanisms to build out your Spark jobs. You can add custom logic and custom custom um, code, which is written in Java or Scala, into into the whole mix. And if people are comfortable using Jupyter Notebooks, you can you can do that and create a model, create an operator using Jupyter Notebook. We'd be very happy to do a full demo for you if you if you want to engage with us and, and send out a send out a request. Uh, let me address other questions as well. So, um, is Apache Spark capable to query data feeds in XML format? It is very much possible. What we do, however, the best practice, because you want to do a lot of different data processing logic on top of incoming data, we take JSON, XML, CSV, delimited, you know, we, we take all kinds of data formats in and we convert, normalize that to JSON. And we have parsers that you can build that would parse out the XML and uh, convert that into, into JSON. Of course, there's, there's, there's obviously challenges in extremely nested XML and things like that, but we do support Parquet as well. Uh, so all of those are supported. We normalize that into JSON and stream analytics uh, so that all our application logic can easily have a consistent format. Anything you want to add to that? Am I saying accurate things on them? Yep, for the date for, uh, data formats, you can also define your own custom partials. You have yeah, that's, a, for that's that. a very important point. You know, you can add custom parsing as well. So this, this product is not shrink wrapped. You don't need to come to back to us to extend it. You can extend the, the platform with connectors uh, receiving different parsers to receive data, data fu functions to process data, connectors to write data, logic itself. Everything is extendable in this platform with APIs, and we have provided all of that. Can the solution be deployed in Databricks? Yes, that is a popular request we are getting uh, these days, and uh, we have done that integration. Databricks for us is another Spark engine. Uh, whether it is open source Apache Spark or the Databricks uh, Spark Cloud, we can support that. You can use Stream Analytics and point that to the Databricks uh, uh, Spark layer. What are all the stream processing engines supported in Stream Analytics? So we, we started with Storm back in 2015. That was our GA version one of the product. We added Spark Streaming. We have Flink support as well, and from a Deep learning point of view, we've integrated TensorFlow. So we have all of that support. To be honest, uh, the Flink support is at uh, beta. We haven't announced a, a generally available product on, on Flink, but uh, that, that's partly because we're assessing overall market demand, and I think that's building up pretty fast. Um, so that is also in the works. Um, there's a question on what kind of skill set you are looking at with respect to maintenance on the long run. How do you compare that with traditional ETL? So the whole point of this product or this tool, Stream Analytics, is to definitely bring down the skill set level. Very, very often people have Ab Initio or Informatica and they have hundreds of people used to that kind of visual tooling and they want that similar, um, similar kind of interface and we transition them very easily to Stream Analytics because you got, you got visual ETL and visual analytics uh, facility here on this product for those kind of people who have uh, visual, uh, uh, the, the visual development habit. And we added the Jupyter Notebook and, and coding interface for people who want to code. Both are, both are available. So we would invite you to, gen, to download Stream Analytics Lite. There is a desktop version that you can download in a few minutes and start using it. Within about eight to 10 minutes, you'll be building Spark pipelines. So Stream Analytics Lite, is available on the website, streamanalytics.com. And um, we look forward to engaging with you, to answering more questions offline. And we want to really, really thank you for your time and your attention today. Larry, if you want to wrap, that's uh, fine by me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anand and Sonam, for what I trust our audience will agree was a very content-rich experience. On the polling window right now, you do have the opportunity to rate your overall experience with the webinar today. Uh, we've already talked about some of the others. Do you agree that Apache Spark is a strong candidate as described in this webinar, yes or no? Would you be interested in a deeper dive of stream analytics? 
is a visual platform for Apache Spark, as shown in this webinar. Again, yes or no. And most importantly, uh, do rate your overall experience and certainly invite you to give your comments and feedback here. And our webinar program team will get uh, all of those. And I think we actually answered all the questions that came in. If you do still have any questions, do provide this, those to us. And if they've not been answered here live, we will send those out to you in a written form. And in addition, uh, this webinar in another couple of days will be archived for reviewing. So if you have colleagues who were not able to attend today that you'd like to be sure to benefit from the content that we shared, they will be able to go to our website and look at this in an ar archived, pre-recorded manner. Thank you again, and this includes our webinar for today.